I just wanted to start by saying it re it's a real privilege to be presenting this um, paper um, in memory of Tony. Um, as Andrew said, Tony was, has been a, always been a very supportive member, uh, a supportive um, person in relation to BASPCAN, and he's often presented papers at our conferences. And in fact, we invited him to present our founders lecture at our last congress in 2009 in Swansea. Today I'll be presenting a study of child protection welfare professionals experience of supervision that I conducted on behalf of BASPCAN. You can tell I was a BASPCAN officer because I actually can pronounce it and I know what it means. Um, BASPCAN is the British Association for the Study and Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect and its membership is about 1,400 um, professionals in child protection and child welfare work, and that's social workers, nurses, pediatricians, police officers, um, and I'm sorry for anybody, any profession I've missed out. We hold a number of conferences every year, and every three years we hold a, a, a three-day national congress. And I'm not sure what you'd call this sampling process, but it struck us we had a captive audience of uh, professionals at those congresses, and we could use that to get information from them. So in 2003, um, we did a study of stress in child protection workers, and in 2009, we did a, um, a study of supervision. And I will be presenting some of the, the find very briefly some of the findings from that study. Um, and the full report, um, if you're interested, can be obtained on the BASPCAN website. So you can actually get access to that full report on the, the BASPCAN website. And the, um, the website address and everything is in your folders. Um, I was going to say, I've, I've collapsed the tables, and I wasn't quite sure that sounded a very sensible thing to say. So I've simplified the tables so that the numbers will make sort of quick and easy um, sense, hopefully. We had a, a Basman's last uh, congress was in uh, Swansea in uh, 2009, and we decided that we would um, questionnaire the, the people who came to congress. And the first set of questions were ones about what, uh, uh, questions about the delegates. So what was their profession? What was the organization they belonged to? And then we asked them 18 questions about supervision, about their experience of supervision. Um, some factual questions about does your organization have a supervision policy? And some questions that asked for their opinions about how good was your supervision? Do you have supervision often enough? And again, the questionnaire is, um, is attached to the, um, the report that's on the website. Some were closed questions like yes, no, don't know. And some were um, Likert scale questions, one to five, very good, very bad on the other side. And there was also some space for, for comments. Um, there were 450 delegates at Congress, and with a bit of cajoling and pleading, we got 113 uh, questionnaires returned, either at Congress or um, by email afterwards. So that gave us a 25% uh, response rate, which wasn't too bad for a self-administered questionnaire. The profession of the, the delegate of the, of the respondents more or less matches the, um, the percentages that came to Congress. So most of the questionnaires were from nurses, um, then from social work, um, medical. I've grouped together pediatricians and, and uh, GPs, and then psychology and therapy. So we had a number of people who were involved in, in um, providing therapy for young people or for um, parents. The other would include, we, sometimes we only had you know, one response from a police officer or one response from a, um, a lawyer. So the, the other group is quite a disparate um, group of people. And the first, one of the questions we asked was, does your organization automatically provide supervision? And I I, actually, I think I've got the figure wrong on the table you've got, and it should be 71% when I rechecked it for the fourth time, and instead of 80%. 71% of the respondents, of all of the respondents, said that supervision was automatically provided by the organisation. And I'm reminded of the, the quote from Tony about, um, what was it, about um, numbers 
uh, not taking over from narrative. And there was a bit of me get sort of thinking, oh, that's good, 70%. Um, you know, say they automatically got supervision. And that made me sort of think, well, yes, but that also means that around 30% are not automatically being provided with supervision by their organisation. And again, you can see there's actually quite a difference between the, the professional groups in that, and that social work would tend to, the social work organisations tended to provide supervision automatically, but that wasn't necessarily true in nursing, or as was mentioned earlier, in, in uh, the medical profession. These were some of the sort of, again, a lot of the, the questions we thought of asking were ones that um, uh, I know Tony had talked about in terms of, of um, what you'd expect from supervision or what you'd expect from organisations that are providing supervision. And when we asked if an organisation, how many organisations had formal supervision policies, 73% said yes. But again, you've got the alternative, which is that over a quarter we're saying either they didn't know whether there was a policy or that the organisation actually didn't have a policy. 70% were supervised by the senior managers. Um, if they weren't supervised by the senior managers, they were supervised by a peer group or by somebody out with that particular profession or, with, or out with that particular organisation. I think I was a bit surprised at this one. When we asked whether people had a supervision contract or agreement, only 44% said that they had a supervision contract or agreement, which I thought was quite low. Um, whether supervision was recorded, 63% said supervision uh, was recorded. Whether they could say, uh, change a supervisor, 35% said they could change a supervisor. And again, you, when we asked people whether they thought their supervisor was competent to carry out supervision in child protection, 73%... I can't do the sums out of my head, is that 27% then said they didn't really think their supervisor was competent to carry out supervision. And again, a bit disturbing, only 57% said that their supervisor, and I was reminded of that looking at that, the, the Geese Theatre this morning, 57% uh, were saying that they didn't think the supervisor was properly prepared for the supervision that they were giving. 